Before the 20th century, the term matter included ordinary matter composed of atoms and excluded other energy phenomena such as light or sound. This concept of matter may be generalized from atoms to include any objects having mass even when at rest. But this is ill-defined because an object's mass can arise from its constituents' motion and interaction energies. Thus, matter does not have a universal definition, nor is it a fundamental concept in physics today. Matter is also used loosely as a general term for the substance that makes up all observable physical objects. All the objects from everyday life that we can bump into, touch or squeeze are composed of atoms. This atomic matter is in turn made up of interacting subatomic particles, usually a nucleus of protons and neutrons, and a cloud of orbiting electrons. Typically, science considers these composite particles matter because they have both rest mass and volume. By contrast, massless particles, such as photons, are not considered matter, because they have neither rest mass nor volume. However, not all particles with rest mass have a classical volume. Since fundamental particles such as quarks and leptons are considered point particles with no effective size or volume, nevertheless, quarks and leptons together make up ordinary matter, and their interactions contribute to the effective volume of the composite particles that make up ordinary matter. Matter commonly exists in four states solid, liquid and gas, and plasma. However, advances in experimental techniques have revealed other previously theoretical phases, such as Bose-Einstein condensates and fermionic condensates. A focus on an elementary particle view of matter also leads to new phases of matter, such as the quark-gluon plasma. For much of the history of the natural sciences people have contemplated the exact nature of matter. The idea that matter was built of discrete building blocks, the so-called particulate theory of matter, was first put forward by the Greek philosophers Leucippus and Democritus. Matter should not be confused with mass, as the two are not quite the same in modern physics. For example, mass is a conserved quantity, which means that its value is unchanging through time with enclosed systems. However, matter is not conserved in such systems, although this is not obvious in ordinary conditions on Earth, where matter is approximately conserved. Still, special relativity shows that matter may disappear by conversion into energy, even inside closed systems. And it can also be created from energy, within such systems. However, because mass can neither be created nor destroyed, the quantity of mass and the quantity of energy remain the same during a transformation of matter into non-material energy. This is also true in the reverse transformation of energy into matter. Different fields of science use the term matter in different, and sometimes incompatible, ways. Some of these ways are based on loose historical meanings, from a time when there was no reason to distinguish mass and matter. As such, there is no single universally agreed scientific meaning of the word matter. Scientifically, the term mass is well defined, but matter is not. Sometimes in the field of physics, matter is simply equated with particles that exhibit rust mass, such as quarks and leptons. However, in both physics and chemistry, matter exhibits both wave-like and particle-like properties, the so-called wave-particle duality. Definition Common definition The common definition of matter is anything that has mass and volume. For example, a car would be said to be made of matter, as it occupies space, and has mass. The observation that matter occupies space goes back to antiquity. However, an explanation for why matter occupies space is recent, and is argued to be a result of the phenomenon described in the Pauli exclusion principle. Two particular examples where the exclusion principle clearly relates matter to the occupation of space are white dwarf stars and neutron stars. Discussed further below, relativity in the context of relativity, mass is not an additive quantity in the sense that one can add the rest masses of particles in a system to get the total rest mass of the system. Thus, in relativity usually a more general view is that it is not the sum of rest masses, 
but the energy momentum tensor that quantifies the amount of matter. This tensor gives the rest mass for the entire system. Matter, therefore, is sometimes considered as anything that contributes to the energy momentum of a system, that is, anything that is not purely gravity. This view is commonly held in fields that deal with general relativity such as cosmology. In this view, light and other massless particles and fields are part of matter. The reason for this is that in this definition, electromagnetic radiation as well as the energy of electromagnetic fields contributes to the mass of systems, and therefore appears to add matter to them. For example, light radiation trapped inside a box would contribute to the mass of the box, as would any kind of energy inside the box including the kinetic energy of particles held by the box. A difference between matter and mass therefore may seem to arise when single particles are examined. In such cases, the mass of single photons is zero. For particles with rest mass, such as leptons and quarks, isolation of the particle in a frame where it is not moving, removes its kinetic energy. A source of definition difficulty in relativity arises from two definitions of mass in common use, one of which is formally equivalent to total energy, and the other of which is referred to as rest mass or invariant mass and is independent of the observer. Only rest mass is loosely equated with matter. Invariant mass is usually applied in physics to unbound systems of particles. However, energies which contribute to the invariant mass may be weighed also in special circumstances, such as when a system that has invariant mass is confined and has no net momentum. Thus, a photon with no mass may still add mass to a system in which it is trapped. The same is true of the kinetic energy of particles, which by definition is not part of their rest mass but which does add rest mass to systems in which these particles reside. Since such mass is measured as part of the mass of ordinary matter in complex systems, the matter status of massless particles and fields of force becomes unclear in such systems. These problems contribute to the lack of a rigorous definition of matter in science. Although mass is easier to define as the total stress energy above, atoms definition a definition of matter based on its physical and chemical structure is matter is made up of atoms. As an example, deoxyribonucleic acid molecules are matter under this definition because they are made of atoms. This definition can extend to include charged atoms and molecules, so as to include plasmas and electrolytes which are not obviously included in the atom's definition. Alternatively, one can adopt the protons, neutrons, and electrons definition. Protons, neutrons, and electrons definition a definition of matter more fine scale than the atoms and molecules definition is. Matter is made up of what atoms and molecules are made of, meaning anything made of positively charged protons, neutral neutrons, and negatively charged electrons. This definition goes beyond atoms and molecules, however, to include substances made from these building blocks that are not simply atoms or molecules, for example white dwarf matter, typically carbon and oxygen nuclei and a sea of degenerate electrons. At a microscopic level the constituent particles of matter such as protons, neutrons, and electrons obey the laws of quantum mechanics and exhibit wave particle duality. At an even deeper level protons and neutrons are made up of quarks and the force fields that bind them together. Quarks and leptons definition as seen in the above discussion. Many early definitions of what can be called ordinary matter were based upon its structure or building blocks. On the scale of elementary particles, a definition that follows this tradition can be stated as Ordinary matter is everything that is composed of elementary fermions, namely quarks and leptons. The connection between these formulations follows. Leptons and quarks combine to form atoms, which in turn form molecules. Because atoms and molecules are said to be matter, it is natural to phrase the definition as 
Ordinary matter is anything that is made of the same things that atoms and molecules are made of. Then, because electrons are leptons, and protons, and neutrons are made of quarks, this definition in turn leads to the definition of matter as being quarks and leptons, which are the two types of elementary fermions, Carothers and Granis state. Ordinary matter is composed entirely of first-generation particles, namely the up and down quarks, plus the electron and its neutrino. This definition of ordinary matter is more subtle than it first appears. All the particles that make up ordinary matter are elementary fermions, while all the force carriers are elementary bosons. The W and Z bosons that mediate the weak force are not made of quarks or leptons, and so are not ordinary matter, even if they have mass. In other words, mass is not something that is exclusive to ordinary matter. The quark-lepton definition of ordinary matter, however, identifies not only the elementary building blocks of matter, but also includes composites made from the constituents. Such composites contain an interaction energy that holds the constituents together, and may constitute the bulk of the mass of the composite. As an example, to a great extent, the mass of an atom is simply the sum of the masses of its constituent protons, neutrons and electrons. However, digging deeper, the protons and neutrons are made up of quarks bound together by gluon fields and these gluon fields contribute significantly to the massive hadrons. In other words, most of what composes the mass of ordinary matter is due to the binding energy of quarks within protons and neutrons. For example, the sum of the mass of the three quarks in a nucleon is approximately 7001125000000000012.5 MeV C2, which is low compared to the mass of a nucleon. The bottom line is that most of the mass of everyday objects comes from the interaction energy of its elementary components. Smaller building blocks issue the standard model groups matter particles into three generations, where each generation consists of two quarks and two leptons. The first generation is the up and down quarks, the electron and the electron neutrino. The second includes the charm and strange quarks, the muon and the muon neutrino. The third generation consists of the top and bottom quarks and the tau and tau neutrino. The most natural explanation for this would be that quarks and leptons of higher generations are excited states of the first generations. If this turns out to be the case, it would imply that quarks and leptons are composite particles, rather than elementary particles. Structure In particle physics, fermions are particles that obey Fermi-Dirac statistics. Fermions can be elementary, like the electron, or composite, like the proton and neutron. In the standard model, there are two types of elementary fermions quarks and leptons, which are discussed next. Quarks Quarks are particles of spin one-half, implying that they are fermions. They carry an electric charge of minus one-third e or plus two-thirds e. For comparison, an electron has a charge of minus one e. They also carry color charge, which is the equivalent of the electric charge for the strong interaction. Quarks also undergo radioactive decay, meaning that they are subject to the weak interaction. Quarks are massive particles, and therefore are also subject to gravity. Baryonic matter baryons are strongly interacting fermions, and so are subject to Fermi-Dirac statistics. Amongst the baryons are the protons and neutrons, which occur in atomic nuclei, but many other unstable baryons exist as well. The term baryon usually refers to triquarks, particles made of three quarks. Exotic baryons made of four quarks and one antiquark are known as the pentaquarks, but their existence is not generally accepted. Baryonic matter is the part of the universe that is made of baryons. This part of the universe does not include dark energy, dark matter, black holes or various forms of degenerate matter, such as composed white dwarf stars and neutron stars. Microwave light seen by Wilkinson Microwave Anisotropy Probe 
suggests that only about 4.6% of that part of the universe within range of the best telescopes is made of baryonic matter, about 23% is dark matter, and about 72% is dark energy. Degenerate matter in physics. Degenerate matter refers to the ground state of a gas of fermions at a temperature near absolute zero. The Pauli exclusion principle requires that only two fermions can occupy a quantum state, one spin up and the other spin down. Hence, at zero temperature, the fermions fill up sufficient levels to accommodate all the available fermions, and in the case of many fermions, the maximum kinetic energy and the pressure of the gas becomes very large, and depends on the number of fermions rather than the temperature. Unlike normal states of matter, degenerate matter is thought to occur during the evolution of heavy stars. The demonstration by Subramanian Chandrasekhar that white dwarf stars have a maximum allowed mass because of the exclusion principle caused a revolution in the theory of star evolution. Degenerate matter includes the part of the universe that is made up of neutron stars and white dwarfs. Strange matter Strange matter is a particular form of quark matter, usually thought of as a liquid of up, down, and strange quarks. It is contrasted with nuclear matter, which is a liquid of neutrons and protons, and with non-strange quark matter, which is a quark liquid that contains only up and down quarks. At high enough density, strange matter is expected to be color superconducting. Strange matter is hypothesized to occur in the core of neutron stars, or, more speculatively, as isolated droplets that may vary in size from femtometers to kilometers. Two meanings of the term, strange matter, in particle physics and astrophysics. The term is used in two ways, one broader and the other more specific. The broader meaning is just quark matter that contains three flavors of quarks, up, down, and strange. In this definition, there is a critical pressure and an associated critical density, and when nuclear matter is compressed beyond this density, the protons and neutrons dissociate into quarks, yielding quark matter. The narrower meaning is quark matter that is more stable than nuclear matter. The idea that this could happen is the strange matter hypothesis of Bodmer and Witten. In this definition, the critical pressure is zero. The true ground state of matter is always quark matter. The nuclei that we see in the matter around us, which are droplets of nuclear matter, are actually metastable, and given enough time would decay into droplets of strange matter, i.e., strangelets. Leptons Leptons are particles of spin one half, meaning that they are fermions. They carry an electric charge of minus one E or zero E. Unlike quarks, leptons do not carry color charge, meaning that they do not experience the strong interaction. Leptons also undergo radioactive decay, meaning that they are subject to the weak interaction. Leptons are massive particles, therefore are subject to gravity. Phases in bulk, matter can exist in several different forms, or states of aggregation, known as phases, depending on ambient pressure, temperature and volume. A phase is a form of matter that has a relatively uniform chemical composition and physical properties. These phases include the three familiar ones, as well as more exotic states of matter. A fluid may be a liquid, gas or plasma. There are also paramagnetic and ferromagnetic phases of magnetic materials. As conditions change, matter may change from one phase into another. These phenomena are called phase transitions and are studied in the field of thermodynamics. In nanomaterials, the vastly increased ratio of surface area to volume results in matter that can exhibit properties entirely different from those of bulk material, and not well described by any bulk phase. Phases are sometimes called states of matter, but this term can lead to confusion with thermodynamic states. For example, two gases maintained at different pressures are in different thermodynamic states, but in the same phase. 